Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with Maths and Stats uh, and in this video, another video in our series of videos dealing with non-parametric correlation analysis, we're going to concentrate on the calculation, the correlation between a nominal variable, that's a variable measured on a nominal scale, with a nominal, measured on a nominal scale of measurement, uh, versus a variable that's measured on an interval or a ratio uh, scale of measurement, if that makes sense. Uh, just to give you a particular example, let's say for argument's sake that we have two measures, we have role and we have salary okay, of individuals. Uh, and the role variable is you're either an executive, yeah, let's say an exec, and uh, first exec, let's say earns 125,000 euros. Uh, the next person that was measured was a manager, they earned uh, 80,000. The next was another exec uh, that earned, let's say 160,000. The next manager uh, earned, let's say, 100,000. The next manager, let's say, for argument's sake, earned uh, 75,000. And let's say then we had a supervisor. The supervisor earned, let's say, let's say, for argument's sake, 50,000. All I'm trying to show you here is this, is that uh, what we have is we have a nominal variable here, okay? Uh, in this case, it has three levels of measurements, yeah? Okay? We have either executives, managers, or supervisors. And we have a continuous variable here, which is salary. That's, uh, that's measured on an interval stroke ratio scale. What we're actually gonna do in this particular correlation analysis, in this particular video, is we're going to do a restriction on the type of nominal variable. In this case, we're not looking at a variable that's truly dichotomous, okay? We're looking at a variable that is multicotomous, okay? So we have a multi a multi cotomous uh, cotomous uh, variable, which basically means it has more than two levels of measurement. Mm -hmm. uh, in the situation, in the situation where we were looking at, let's say for argument's sake that we were looking at a, a true dichotomous nominal variable and an interval variable, uh, the appropriate correlation is what's known as the point by zero correlation. But in this case, the appropriate correlation for a multi-columnist nominal variable versus an an a variable measured on an interval scale uh, is what's known as the eta correlation coefficient. So we have the eta correlation, correlation coefficient. Um, and the correlation coefficient is defined in terms of the sum of squares uh, associated with the groups that are formed uh, with respect to uh, the levels of measurement uh, associated with the multi cotomous nominal variable. So eta, uh, let's say eta, the eta correlation coefficient is simply equal to, it's equal to the sum of squares, the sum of squares between groups, okay, relative to the sum of squares total, okay, the total sum of squares. And uh, more importantly, it's the square root of that. So we have to calculate the square root of that. Where, let's define the sum of squares between groups, what we'll do is we break these guys up into groups uh, and we will calculate their individual sums of squares. So we have the sum of squares between groups is, let's call the nominal variable X and let's call the, the interval variable Y. So we're gonna look at all the groups, let's say the executives, uh, and we're gonna have a look at their particular observations uh, and we're gonna calculate their own group means. Okay? So for each sum of squares, sum of squares between groups is simply equal to, we're going to calculate the group means. So let's say the y i's, so the individual group means we're going to calculate. And we're going to find their distance away from the overall group mean. Okay? Uh, so it's the center of the individual distributions and how far they are away from the total center uh, for the overall distribution. So let's call that y bar. And we're going to square that. Okay, so we're calculating effectively the squared distance that the group means are away from the global mean. And let's keep in mind that each group might not have the same sample size. So this is going to be a weighted mean. So we're going to take into consideration the group sizes. And this is a summation across all of the groups. So this is the sum of squares. There's our squares. And this is the sum of the squares of the distance between the individual group means and the overall group mean. And just for, uh, for uh, let's say, convenience, we're going to calculate the sum of squares total uh, to be equal to the sum of squares between groups plus the sum of squares within groups, okay? uh, which, is a little bit, which is a little bit handier for us to, 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 cal to calculate, where the sum of squares within groups is simply equal to 
for each observation in a group. So for each observation in a group, we're going to take away the respective group mean. Okay? Uh, and we're going to square that. Uh, and we're going to do this across all the groups. So we're going to sum all of these things up across all of the groups. There should be really, excuse me, there should really be two sigmas here. Yeah, but you'll see this, you'll see this in action in a moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all of these observations and we're going to create a table from them. Let's say exec represents Z, and manager represents M, and supervisor represents, let's say, for argument's sake, S. So what we have is, excuse me. So what we have is, let's say we have, so we have E, M, S. This is a